Earlier this year at CES, I saw an announcement for a wearable called Python that claimed that it could make brain measurements from your wrist to record things like focus, mental agility, and even readiness. Now this made me really excited because most of the brain data that I've been working with for the past 10 years all come from these somewhat awkward head devices that I have a hard time wearing in public. And I know most people would never want to be seen with a brain device in a coffee shop, for example. So if we could get brain measurements from the wrist, it would make things so much easier. I know I definitely could have used something like this when I was doing neuroscience studies with the Navy five years ago. And Python's been working with a bunch of professional organizations like NASCAR drivers, Major League Baseball, but also with healthcare providers. But the big question is, how are they getting focus and mental agility measurements from the wrist? And what does that mean for the brain testing neurotechnology field moving forward? Python was nice enough to send me one of their three upcoming devices. This one's available right now. It's called Python Ready, and I wore it during a trip to Colorado where I tested it on the plane, during mountain biking, and even took it fishing and camping. Coincidentally, I got a pretty nasty head cold on the trip, so I got to test it and get data during times of illness as well. In this video, we'll talk about what it was like to wear the device and go through the neuroscience testing, the science behind the device, what I didn't like about Python, and what the data showed, especially through my time of illness. Be sure to stick around to the end of this video because I'll talk about where there's a ton of debate right now on if you can actually get brain data from peripheral nerves and actually get usable data from a wrist wearable. I think I have a much better idea now after using Python and I'll talk about that at the end. Overall, this is a really easy wrist wearable. You can see the electrode sensors on the back of the main module, which pick up signals from both the muscles and nerves within your wrist. The charger is a two-prong magnetic clip that's used with some other smartwatches on the market. Replacements can be easily ordered on Amazon, but I was a little paranoid on my trip because I didn't have any backup since my Apple Watch uses a magnetic puck and Whoop uses USB-C. When I was traveling with the Python, I only had the Python charger that could work with it, and if I lost it, I wouldn't have been able to continue my tests. Also, with my Python for the first couple of days, it was on empty battery red indicator despite me charging it all night. Now it worked just fine, but I was paranoid because I wasn't sure when it was gonna run out of battery. And then it seemed to fix itself several days later with a firmware update. But I was able to talk to Python a few days later and they said that yes, they were aware of the issue that it's been now fixed with the firmware update. So that empty red battery indicator shouldn't be an issue anymore. And the battery indicator on mine has been working just fine ever since. The screen is nice and basic and the wrist strap is totally comfortable. It's just like wearing a Whoop or an Apple Watch. I completely forget I even have it on. It syncs with the Python app on your phone to get the correct date and time, and overall the process was really seamless. As soon as I downloaded the app, it was really easy to connect the Python through Bluetooth, and we were off to the races. The screen does turn off automatically after about 10 seconds. At first, I thought you had to cue the neuroscience tests on the app, which was a little difficult juggling both the phone and the device, but then I realized how to cue them up on your device itself. You just use the side button to toggle between the different neuroscience tests, and then you hit the Python button to start a five second countdown to the neuroscience test. Now the sensors are picking up electrical signals from the muscles in your wrist and arm called electromyography. They have an electrical discharge when you move your hand. But Python has taken traditional EMG and elevated it to a whole new level of measurement because it's measuring both electrical signals from your muscles and nerves in your wrist and using artificial intelligence to separate out the signal. One thing about the wrist is that there's less muscle and more nerves in your wrist compared to the rest of the arm. So that helps them use AI and machine learning in the Python software to separate out the signal of the nerves from the electrical discharge of the muscles to isolate the neural signal and get more precise measurements than normal EMG to measure focus, reaction time, and impulse control. They're calling this new type of measurement electroneurography or ENG. The first orange line is the channel that measures the radial thumb side, and the second purple line is the channel that measures the ulnar side on the index finger side. The focus test is really quick. It only takes about 20 seconds. You have to open your hand every time this light goes off to test your mental quickness. I found it really quick to do, but it is another habit that you actually have to get used to doing throughout the day if you wanna get data. I think athletes or someone who had a traumatic brain injury and is really concerned about their 
their brain health would have the most incentive to build this type of habit of testing their readiness throughout the day. And the mental agility test is actually really challenging. You're supposed to open your hand with the white light and not open it with the orange. Apparently I had some serious impulse control problems on the trip because I did pretty horrible with the agility test. Another mistake I made was trying to do the focus testing when I didn't have enough time to do it. I was on the plane, we were about to land, and I had to end the test early because it takes at least five minutes. Basically, it just said that the test failed and didn't upload the data to my phone. Another cool feature is that you can take notes about the sessions after you complete the experiment to properly document things when you're looking back through. You can see my worst scores are documented like on a plane with a toddler so that I knew that I was on the plane. That's why my scores were so bad. Reviewing my data, we left on July 10th and by July 12th, I was feeling just totally awful with the head cold. By July 14th, I was feeling significantly better. We were out in nature and camping. You can see how my WHOOP recovery score dipped really low on the 13th, then it dipped again on the 15th after having a rough night in the tent with a toddler. I set my baseline Python scores on the evening of July 9th. That morning before the trip, I was up 2% on my readiness testing. While on the plane, I did two readiness tests that were down 54% and 120%. And then I did an agility test that was only 11 out of 100 and was down 83% from my baseline. On day number one of the trip, it was July 11th and I was starting to come down with the cold. I was down 5% on agility testing and 13% on readiness testing. Then I got sick and had a terrible night of sleep on July 11th. I took tests on July 12th that was down 3% on readiness, but down 16% on agility. So I think that my head cold actually affected my impulse control the most, especially with the sleep deprivation. So with my initial testing, it seemed that distraction affected the scores the most, but illness definitely affected it as well because things were down five to 16% with the head cold and poor sleep. Then when I got back, I was doing much better. I was up 15% on the readiness score and I had a personal best on the agility score that was up 16% from when I had my illness. Now, Python is at the forefront of the question if we can get good brain data from the wrist. I'm really fascinated about how they're able to isolate neurological signals from the wrist because there's a lot more going on here than traditional EMG, which just measured muscle contractions in the past. These peripheral nerves might contain usable signals from the brain before, during, after and even between muscle contractions. They could potentially be useful even when a person is sitting still to be used for measurements of sleep, meditation, and focus throughout the day. Only time will tell how much data Python's electroneurography can get from these peripheral nerves. But after this experience, I'm a lot more optimistic than ever that we can do this. If you wanna read up more about their technology in clinical science, there's a bunch of resources on their website to read up on. So for now, the Python Ready does the readiness, focus, and mental agility tests. Later on this year, they're coming out with the Python Perform, which is supposed to track sleep and other metrics that I'm really excited about. I think if the Python Perform can get good sleep metrics and it can do these neuroscience tests, it will actually be a better device with more value than the Whoop. Because not only will you be getting the rest data, but you'll also be getting the cognitive performance measurements as well. I think it's also nice that you have a clock to look at because when I was traveling, I actually didn't have to take my Apple Watch since I had the Python ready to take a look at what time it was. For now, I think the Python has the most utility in sports professionals and athletes that are really interested in how their performance changes throughout the weeks, months, and days of training. But I think for people that have had traumatic brain injury or a concussion and are really concerned about their impulse control and reaction times, this would be an excellent device to track that over time as well. It might be great data to share with your doctor and see if different medications or treatments are actually actually improving your impulse control or reaction time. I'm really looking forward to testing this with different supplements and other ways of improving my reaction time and performance. And there's even a competitive aspect to this. They have this global leadership board of reaction times. And I think it would be just so interesting to see the top level Olympic or professional athletes put their data up there for people to see if you can match how well their brain is functioning. I would have loved to seen Michael Jordan or Wayne Gretzky see what their reaction times or impulse control was at their prime. 
Maybe we'll have measurements of LeBron James or Sidney Crosby or other high performers these days. As far as improving the app, I wish they showed more of a timeline of the scores over the course of a month. Right now they have a ranking system. They show your best score and your worst score, but it's kind of hard to parse out when exactly in the timeline that those happened. So if they could make graphs that look more similar to what Whoop or Aura has, I think that would help the functionality of the app a lot. I did give Python this feedback about the data visualizations and they said that they're already working on it for the app, but they need to put it through some final testing before it's available within a few weeks. And it looks really great. I also wish you had more access to the settings on the app. For instance, I'd like to get the screen to stay on longer for my device because I was trying to film with it, it kept turning off on me, but also I'd like the watch indicator to stay on for longer periods of time as well. So being able to change settings, like how long the screen stays on would be beneficial, I think as well. I'm glad that they fixed the battery indicator icon. That would have been a big issue, but it seems to be fixed with the firmware updates. And for anybody out there that wants to get the device, I don't think that it's going to be a problem anymore. So I'm really excited to see them roll out Python Ready. I think it has a ton of utility in sports training, but also for people that are worried about their reaction time and impulse control. One really cool thing about the Python Ready is that it's really inexpensive. You can get the device sent to you if you just pay for the annual subscription. And if you get a two year membership, it's only $100 a year. Compare that to the Whoop 4.0, which is costing $200 a year right now, which is twice the price. I should mention that Python just ran out of stock during the time of making this video. So if you want to pre-register for the next batch in September, they did offer a discount code to the Tech for Psych audience. If you click the link in the description of this video, make sure to use the checkout code that's listed there in the description. Hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see what other devices are available right now for gathering metrics on how well your brain is functioning, click this video here and I'll see you on the other side.